السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد طيب I think if you come closer طيب because I'm not using the mic إن شاء الله we continue إن شاء الله uh, talking about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how he was doing the, how he was doing the settlement for the disputes among the companions, and also one of the hadith between the companions and the Jews, the Yahud. This is a long hadith, but it is important. Sahel ibn uh, Abu ibn Abi Hathma reported that Muhayyisa ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Sahel went in the direction of Khaybar. What is Khaybar? Huh? For whom? For Yehud. So we mention Khaybar and Yehud, the Jews. Because they were fatigued, each of them went to a day tree to eat from. Abdullah was attacked and his neck was broken. He was killed. Who killed him? We don't know. And also they don't know. I mean his cousins and the friends. So he was killed. And he was thrown in a well. And the companions didn't know where he was. So they searched for him, took him out of the well and buried him. Yani they did the janazah after searching. Then his brother Abdul Rahman and his two cousins, Huwayisa and Muhayisa, went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abdul Rahman proceeded to talk about the incident while he was the youngest and the brother of the one who was killed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, older, older. It means the older should speak first. The older should speak first. So if there are two people, okay, as a respect, the, you should give the older, you should give the chance for the older to speak. If this is also one of the manners in Islam, you give the chance for the one who is older. Uh, or he said, another narration, let the, the oldest speak first. Thereof, Abdul Rahman uh, stopped speaking and waited until Huwayisa and Muhayisa both spoke. Then he spoke regarding the matter of this, their companion. He sa they said, O oh, Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We found Abdullah bin Sa'd killed and tossed in one of the wells of Khaybar. And we have no enemies in Khaybar apart from the Jews. It is only the Yahud. Tayyib. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Who do you accuse? They said, again, if you remember the concept that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always asks, Okay, he will not accept directly. This is very important. If anyone comes to you, you don't accept from him directly. You ask, you clarify. He is your brother, he is your uh, uh, friend, he is your enemy. You should ask. But to go directly and you accuse people, this is not right. Okay, he beat me, he hit my car, Taib. Where, how, when. We should, we should ask. The Prophet ﷺ was te he was teaching us this, this concept. Okay, who do you accuse? They said, we accuse the Jews. Okay, this simple question, who do you accuse? The answer, we accuse Yehud. This is enough? No, this is not enough. The Prophet ﷺ did not bring the Yehud, Yalla, we kill you because you killed someone. We accuse the Jews thereof, sorry, therefore, Rasulullah ﷺ wrote to them regarding that issue. He wrote to? He wrote to the Jews. He wrote to the Jews. And they replied. Yeah, and he wrote the, to the Jews. We, there are two people or three people accused that you killed their friend. The Jews said, we did not kill him. So now, the Muslims accused the Yehud. The Yehud said, we did not. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, are you willing to give 50 oaths? that the Jews killed him. Now, your duty is to say, Wallahi, how many times? 
50 times. You say this 50 times. Or the, the other narration clarify this. 50 of you are to testify against one of them. You accuse the Yehud, bring 50 of you from the Muslims to accuse one person. What does this mean? It means to accuse general accusation, the Yehud killed him. This is not acceptable. There should be a killer, one or two or three. And you should, you know, specify, you mention this person. You mention a shape, or this person, or if you know his name. But to claim the Yehud killed him, who killed him exactly? Or Rasulullah, we don't know. The Prophet said, 50 should give the oath. How? Wallahi. This person killed our friend. Then the second one. Wallahi. The third, the fourth. The th How many? 50. Uh, the Prophet also had a third narration. Would you give 50 oaths and then demand the blood of your killer? They said, it was something that we did not see. It was something we did not see. Tayyip, they said, oh, Rasulullah, uh, we did not see that. So how can we swear an oath? We are not going to swear on something we don't know. Subhanallah. The enemy, Yahud, the worst people. Okay, and they claim that they killed one of the Muslims. But subhanallah, the companions will not witness something they, that they did not see. This is very important. They, we don't know who killed him, but the Jews are our enemies. Yani they were emphasizing they are our enemies. And the Prophet did not accept that. He did not accept that. Wallah, khalas, because he is your enemy. Any, anything wrong. He did that? We will not accept that. They said, uh, sorry. Then uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, then they will swear 50 oaths that they did not kill him. If you will not give the 50 oath, now the Yahud. The Prophet وسلم, said, if you are not going to give the 50 oath, the Yahud will give. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Yahud, okay, they will, not, will uh, give the 50 oath and will free themselves from killing your companion. I'm trying with you. You said we did not see. We will not say the 50 oath. Khalas, the Prophet Sallallahu will go to the second part. The second part, I ask the Yahud, you give 50 oath. The companion said, oh, Rasulullah, yani, if you keep it for them, they just believe in Allah, which is worse than lying. Which is worse? I mean, which sin is worse? Lying or disbelieving in Allah? Disbelieving. They disbelieve in Allah. Okay? Definitely they will lie. Oh, Rasulullah, will, yani, yeah, this is not, yani, uh, they will not care. They will not care. Oh, Rasulullah, we will never accept that oath of a, a Jew. The sin of disbelief that they are doing is worse than the sin of lying. At that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disliked that his blood money not be paid. So he himself paid it with 100 camels. Okay, now what to do? Okay, we don't have any proof. And there is a Muslim. We lost one of the Muslims. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ did not like that the Muslim will, يعني, will be uh, without uh, the, blood, the blood money. So the Prophet ﷺ paid this blood money from his pocket. Alayhi salatu wasalam. How many camels? 100. 100. 100. So here the, 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 uh, the point. So here the point is very important, which is the Prophet ﷺ. And this is also one of the beauty of Islam. One of the beautiful things in Islam. Justice, l'adl, l'adl. You have to be just with your friend and with your enemy. 
okay not to be just only with your friends and i'm just with the enemies no this is wrong haram not allowed in islam i have to be just with everyone why because oppression of zulm is haram oppression is haram at all uh, and also there is something here and yani we learn from this hadith the rule that if you have if you don't have a proof okay so you, you should you should say wallahi 50 times or from 50 people 50 times from 50 people okay this is called qasama qasama okay the way you swear 50 times i i mean and from 50 people why because they don't have proof they don't have proof but if 50 people from the muslims said this person killed our friend khalas the prophet will take him okay if they did not the the jews will say 50 times wallahi khalas so this is called al qasama so also yeah and one of the important points here that the prophet paid from his pocket to يعني, uh, make them uh, يعني, um, uh, to please them because no doubt they lost one of their family members okay what is, what is the solution now they don't have proof they did not see and the, uh, they did not accept the Jews to, to swear what to do now so the Prophet sent from himself he said Khalas, this is 100 camels for his family because I cannot make Qisas. Can we make Qisas? Can we kill the killer? We don't know who is the killer. Okay, if we don't know the killers, Khalas, he, he, yani his blood went free without any compensation. Also, this is haram. Or, yani, or yani, makes his family very sad. So the Prophet ﷺ to please them and also to reduce the, the, the sadness of his family. Yalla, this is 100 camels. This 100, uh, she comes. Uh, so, so, subhanAllah, sometimes you need to pay from your side. It, it is not your problem. Is it the problem of Rasulullah? Should he pay? He should not pay. He can't tell them simply, Wallah, you don't have any proof. I cannot uh, kill the Yahud because they are our enemy. And khalas. But the Prophet did not like that. So sometimes we need to pay from our pocket and we lose our money to please the others. In Islam, we, we don't have the concept, let them go to hell. It is not my issue. No, in Islam, I care about my brothers and sisters in Islam. We pay, halas. And sometimes maybe I take a loan to pay them. Okay, there is, uh, yani in, uh, there is something called you know the, uh, the the eye of zakah okay the eye of the zakah allah mentioned eight categories okay to whom we give the zakah you know the ayah in the sadaqatu lil fuqara wal masakin when you if you have zakat money to whom we should, we can give there are eight categories not only the poor there are eight one of them is, which is called al gharimin al gharimin Okay. What does the mean with the, mean? One of the meanings, the one who has loan and he cannot pay the loan. Yani I took a loan, for example, to, to buy medicine for my son. Then I took another loan. Why? Because he needs operation. At the beginning, 100 KD for the medicine. Then 3,000 KD for the operation. Then another operation because they failed the operation. So I need to take him to another country. Okay, so now I'm in a big trouble. I cannot pay this loan. So they give me from the zakah. This is one of the meaning of al-gharimin. Another meaning of, of al-gharimin, the one who pays money for settlement. There are problems between two tribes. Okay, Muslims, of course. Okay, so there is fight. And usually if there is fight, there is a loss people died so this tribe wants uh, the blood money from this tribe and also this tribe wants blood money from this tribe and they are fighting so I tell them how much you need 
I want one million dinar. How much you need? I want one million and a half. خلاص. Take one million, take one and a half. But please don't fight. Okay, from where I pay this? Maybe I need to take a loan. So then I deserve the zakah. Why? Because I am bringing the Muslims together. So this is very important in Islam. This is very important in Islam. طيب. Another hadith. Uh, during the incident of Al Hudaybiyah, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made a treaty between himself and the people of Mecca, what happened? In the Hudaybiyah, the Muslims went to perform the Umrah. The Kufa said, "No Umrah for you today, uh, this year. Go back, and you do Umrah when next year. Tamam? So, and next year you come only three days." You enter Mecca how many days? Three days. You enter Mecca three days and then yalla ma'a salama, out. So they came the Muslims next year. It is called Umrat al-Qadha or al-Qadiyya. So they came next year and they performed Umrah, the Muslims. So after the three days finished, the kuffar went to Ali ibn Abi Talib. They said, tell your friend yalla, finish, finish the three days. They mean the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Subhanallah. So when they, uh, when he left sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, uh, the daughter of, uh, the, uh, sorry, the daughter of uh, Hamza, because in the seventh year, Ja'far did not die. Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala was killed in, in the eighth year. Which battle? Mu'ta. And the battle of Mu'ta. Okay? Who's next, brothers? Who goes next? Yeah. Who goes next? Yeah, Azhar. Mm. So, uh, Ja'far was killed in, in, in Mu'ta. But uh, Hamza was killed Uhud in, in the third year in the third year طيب. so the daughter of Hamza came رضي الله تعالى uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was followed by the daughter of Hamza who was calling him or oh, uncle or oh, uncle she was telling the Prophet ﷺ ya am ya am why because who is Hamza I mean what's the relationship between Hamza and the Prophet ﷺ Uncle, this number one. And number, number two, brother. Why? Breastfeeding together. So that's why she was saying, oh, uncle, oh, uncle. طيب. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala received her and took her by her hand and said to Fatima, take your uncle's daughter. Okay. So Ali ibn Abi Talib took the daughter of Hamza and he, he handled the daughter to his wife, Fatima. Okay? And he said, take your uncle's daughter. Hamza is your uncle. Okay? And she, she's your daughter. Huh. Nadim, Abu Ali, Tkalam an al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an jamal al-Islam. Muhammad Ibrahim. That's So, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala said, when we reached Medina, myself, Ja'far, and Zayd ibn Haritha. So now she went with Fatima. But when we reached Medina, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Zayd ibn Haritha, and Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, disputed. Everyone wants to take care of the daughter of Hamza, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala, continued. Ja'far argument was, so now everyone said something. So what was the argument of Ja'far, radiallahu ta'ala an? She is my cousin, number one, and her maternal aunt is my wife. So I have two things, two sides 
to take care of this daughter. Okay? My wife, uh, who is his wife? Asma bint Umais. Asma bint Umais is the aunt of the daughter of Hamza. And also I am her cousin. So I deserve to take care of this uh, girl. This is Ja'far, bin Abi Talib, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Uh, Zayd said, Zayd bin Haratha, she is my niece. And I, uh, she, uh, she's, he said, she is my niece. This is uh, Zayd. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, I am the one who took her and she is my cousin. And I am married to the daughter of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she is most deserving of caring for her. The result was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said or ruled that she be given to her maternal aunt. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala an. And said, why? He said, the maternal aunt has the status of the mother. Al-khala bi manzilat al-um. Al-khala is like the mother. So khalas. Oh, Ja'far, you take the daughter, uh, the daughter of Hamza. Why? Because your wife? Uh, uh, yes, his, uh, the aunt of, uh, the daughter of Hamza. طيب, now, what is, uh, يعني, they were disputing. Everyone wants to take. The Prophet said, خلاص, she, is to, she should go to Ja'far. He did not ignore them, the others. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as for you, O Ja'far, you are the most similar to me in appearance and manners. Radiallahu ta'ala an. Your appearance and your manners like me. This is number one. As for you, O Ali, you are from me and I am from you. And about Zayd, you are our brother and freed slave. Why he said that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wants to please all of them. Maybe some of them became sad. Okay, يعني, uh, brothers, the point is not that خلاص, this is the right and this is the just and I'm doing that. Some, some people say that like, uh, I am straightforward, I am telling the truth, and you like, you, you are welcome, you don't like, Allah, ma'as-salama. No, this is not right. This is not, I mean, this is not Islamic way. You should care about the people, I mean, the feelings of the people. The Prophet ﷺ did not ignore them. He said, oh, Zayd, you are this and this, oh, Ali, you are this and this, Ja'far, you are this and this. Yani, I should care about the emotions of the people. To be, يعني, to be straight and you tell the truth. Some people are proud. I am telling the truth always. I am straightforward. خلاص. You are happy with that. You are not happy. This is not my issue. No, you sh it should be your issue. I should work. Uh, يعني, I should work. يعني, or sh I should try to make people happy. And if I notice one of the brothers or one of the sisters sad, so how to make them happy? Okay, so this is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ja'far. And uh, Zayd ibn Haritha radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. And also, يعني, we learn from the hadith that subhanAllah, the companions were competing for what? For good. They were competing. يعني, it is not easy to take responsibility of uh, a girl. يعني, nowadays, we are suffering with our children. So what about we take the other's children? Okay, it is not easy. So subhanAllah, يعني, the, the companions الله تعالى, were competing for fi'l al-khair, for doing good. And it is not only to pay money. No, you take care of a girl. And this is not easy. Imagine that you have a girl at home. You have to teach this girl. You have to, يعني, to teach her the hijab. And if she gets uh, old, يعني, to find a husband for this girl. It's not easy. Subhanallah, يعني, I, I remember one of the brothers, uh, I think he was engineer in the faculty of medicine, يعني, to fix the takif, uh, the AC. So Subhanallah, uh, one time, I think after the salah, he was complaining, yeah, and he was talking to me. He said, Subhanallah, my, my brother passed away and he has four daughters. And also, he, I think he has four daughters. I think for, he's from India, and you know. 
What is the meaning that if you have four daughters and you are in India? What is the meaning of that? Huh? Very difficult. And add also another four daughters. How much you need to pay? Okay? SubhanAllah, so it is not easy. It's not easy, I mean, to take care of the, uh, the girls. Also, when, when with the hadith, uh, Ikrimah reported that, radiallahu ta'ala, Rifa'a, radiallahu ta'ala, an, divorced his wife. And Abdul Rahman ibn al Zubair al Quradi married her. Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, said, she came wearing a green khimar. Khimar, it is the head covering. And complained to me regarding her husband. The lady divorced. Then she married another husband. She came complaining to Aisha about the second husband. Uh, complained to me regarding her husband and showed me green bruises on her skin. He was beating his wife. When Rasulullah sallallahu came and the women were defending each other, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said, I have never seen anyone go through that, you know, what the believers go through. Her skin is greener than her khimar. Her khimar was green, but his, her skin is more greener. It means the bruising clear because of beating. He was beating his wife. Aisha said, Then the wife of Rifa'a al Quradi came to Rasulullah while I and Abu Bakr were both sitting there. She said, O oh Rasulullah, I was married to Rifa'a and he divorced me. And after my waiting period was over, I married Abdul Rahman al Quradi. And O oh Rasulullah, by Allah, he is impotent. Yeah, and he has a sexual problem. Khalid ibn Sa'id uh, was at the door waiting to be given permissible permission to enter. And he said, O oh Abu Bakr, do you not hear what this woman is openly saying to the Prophet yeah, This is shame. She went to the Prophet saying that my husband is this and this. Yeah, I mean, this is shame. So Khal Sa'id said to Abu Bakr, Oh, Abu Bakr, you don't hear what she's saying in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But no, by Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only smiling. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, uh, Perhaps you want to go back to Rifa'ah. The Prophet understood the point. You are complaining about your second husband, that he is impotent. Ah, you want to go back to the first husband? Huh? The Prophet said, perhaps you want to go back to Rifa'ah. Then he said, وسلم, this is not possible until he consummates the marriage with you. This is not allowed until you have the intercourse with him. Then if he divorces you, then you can't go back. But without the intercourse, this is not allowed to go back to your first husband. Of course, why it is not allowed? Because this is after the third divorce. This is after the third divorce. If the man divorces his wife, okay, then the, the time finished, he can get back to his wife. Uh, if it is during the period. But if the period finish, he can marry his wife with a new marriage, with a new uh, contract. But uh, if he divorced three times, it is not allowed for him to marry his wife again or this lady again until he marries, uh, she marries another man after the intercourse, he, 
and divorce, then he can, she can marry the first one. So she wants to marry the first, the Prophet said, perhaps you want the, to go back to the first? No, this is not possible until, until you, you make, uh, uh, you have the intercourse with him. Her husband at that time heard what she said, the second husband. She, she accused him that he's impotent and that she had gone to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So he went to him with two of his sons from another wife and said, by Allah or Rasulullah, she has lied. She said, I am impotent. I have children. From where the children? Subhanallah. So يعني, he wants to prove that she's lying. She's lying. But she is, then the man said, she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rifa'ah. Oh, Rasulullah, she is disobedient, she wants the first husband. That's why she is accusing me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, are these your sons? He said, yes. O oh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, you make whatever claim you make, however they resemble him more than a crow resembles a crow. It means, يعني, uh, it is clear that they are your sons from the sheep. Uh, the Prophet يعني, the Prophet both sides of the dispute, disputing parties, even if one of them was not, uh, sorry. Yes, the hadith finish, right, uh, like that. So the Prophet وسلم, we understand from this hadith, he, alayhi salatu wasalam, understood what she wants. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So يعني, he did not accept that. And the man, when he heard, he came to, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi So, so uh, this is very important, brothers, that the judge should be alert. He should be smart. Don't, uh, he should not accept anything. Okay? And also, يعني, also you, you as a boss, you as a father, you should not accept anything. No, the, the Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, لا يلدغ المؤمن من جحر مرتين. The believer should not be bitten from the same place twice. Okay, then you are not, yeah, yeah subhanAllah, uh, if you are a believer, it doesn't mean you are stupid. No, you should be careful. I do the same mistake again and again. No, I should not accept that. Okay, so people come to you and they complain and you ac accept from them directly. You should be, you should, يعني, you should be patient and you should listen from this side, from the other side. This is very important, brothers. And we learn this from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I stop here.